and good morning. Here is the news at 10. First, the highlight. Lagos State Governor expresses confidence with level of construction work at Massey Children's Hospital. Trade Union Congress of Nigeria calls for swift action from state government on national minimum wage adjustment. And quarantine millions of people without power, thousands rescued from floods as Hurricane Milton wrecks havoc in U.S. And in sports, the Eagles of Nigeria target victory against Libya in Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. And all the details, I am Mike James. Lagos State Governor Baba Didi Sol has expressed confidence with the level of construction work at the site of the new Massey Children's Hospital in Lagos Island. Speaking after an inspection of the project, Governor Sawalu described the project as the largest pediatric hospital in sub-Saharan Africa in one location that would serve residents of the state for centuries when completed. Governor Sawalu was joined by the State Commissioner for Health, Akia Bayomi, his information and strategy counterparts, Binga Motosho, and other top government officials commanded contractors handling the project with assurance that it will be completed next year, while efforts are also being intensified on other health projects ongoing in the state. And the point is, Lagos deserves it. Um, the current Massey Children's Hospital, which is almost 100 years old, the minimum we can do is to not only just bring back that name, but put up a structure too that will last another 200 years. And you can see from what we're doing here, this certainly will last centuries. Um, so I'm happy with the commitment and the quality of work that has been done. There are two contractors here. The chairman, Lagos East Local Council Development Area, Falavio Aladi, commended the initiative, which he said would make the healthcare delivery system efficient and readily available for residents of the state and a, bef and a befitting gift to children of Lagos Island and the centenary of the famous children's hospital. I'm very happy as a chairman. I'm a lucky boy to be for this kind of edifice to put in in this local when my tenure. I want to thank the executive governor for bringing this home. And I believe that the people of Lagos Island is, and Lagos Island in general is very happy with him for bringing this. This is, is a fact. This edifice will, will take more than centuries. When I say centuries, I'm not thinking the next three hundred years. This will still be here, and it's going to serve the people of Lagos Island very closely. Our children will be very, very. They have a very good access to health care service. Our correspondent Adjola Kindele reports that when completed, the new Massey 130-bed multi-floor specialist pediatric hospital will boost boast of modern facilities, multi-level car park helipad, among others. The Lagos State Government has intensified efforts to foster the communication link between government agencies and citizens at a grassroots level. Secretary to the State Government, Abimbola Salu Hunde, stated this during a meeting with secretaries of local government and local council development areas, scribe 57 in the state. Salu Hunde, Noted that Governor Babajide Sawulu commended the body of secretaries and stakeholders for the thorough engagement with the Yorubas, the Utes, and other groups in the state, which has in the long run resulted in a peaceful and thriving environment. She urged them to always engage community members and identify with them by creating more awareness about the state government's achievement under the present administration's themes plus agenda. On his part, Chairman Scribe 57, Hakim Dauda, assured the state government of commitment to promoting its activities and protecting infrastructure across the state. The Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Social Development has collaborated with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, to organize a three-day training meeting with state-level stakeholders on the Diversion Community Rehabilitation Program. In a welcome address at the event, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Youth and Social Development, Tony Oke Osoyintolu, who was represented by Director of Social Welfare Department, Tony Jayola, stated that the program is not only very important to the state government, but highly beneficial to the children involved, 
as well as the parents. Okay, Osoi Tolu added that the program has recorded a lot of success as it has rescued many children who would have become a thorn in the flesh of the society today. Speaking on behalf of UNICEF Program Social Policy Man Manager Mohamed Okuri, commended the late state government for the initiative, which are described as laudable and very important to UNICEF. According to him, UNICEF is highly interested in the Diversion Community Rehabilitation Program because it promotes and protects the child rights laws. About 125 compressed natural gas CNG conversion centers have been activated across the country. Chief Executive Officer, Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, PCNGI, Michael Unwagbimi, who made this known, said it surpassed the 100 centers earlier anticipated. Unwagbimi said additional 80 billion naira worth of CNG investments were generated within the last one week. He added that President Bola Tinubu had directed that 1 million Nigerians with commercial vehicles or ride share should be converted to CNG free of charge. And over to the rest of the stories, the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, has called on the state government to work out the consequential adjustment to the new national minimum wage without further delay to enable workers in the states to enjoy their monies. TUC President Festus Osifo made the call at a press conference in Abuja, explaining that the delay in the consequential adjustments has affected the economic power of Nigerian workers in various states. Osifo also called on the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, to give licenses to marketers to enable Nigerians have access to the product. The TUC president said the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, should source refined petrol from other places if the Dangote refinery cannot meet the daily demands of Nigerians. The Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, has reiterated its commitment to advancing innovation in Nigeria's basic education sector through research and integrating smart technology-driven education. Executive Secretary of UBEC, Hamid Boboyi, stated this during the inauguration of the Research Management Committee at the UBEC Digital Resource Center in Abuja. Bobui emphasized that the Commission's research project will be aligned with the nation's goal of achieving a technology-driven education system. He said the focus is to ensure that all research initiatives supported by UBEC will contribute significantly to establishing a smart educational system that will enhance learning outcomes for students. Bobui urged the committee members to work together to ensure the successful implementation of smart education initiatives across the country. Today's International Day of the Girl Child. The day aims to highlight and address the needs and challenges girls face while promoting girls' empowerment and the fulfillment of their human rights. This year's theme, Girls' Vision for the Future, conveys both the need for urgent action and persistent hope driven by the power of girls' voices and vision for the future. The theme is to listen to girls and invest in proven solutions accelerating progress towards a future in which every girl fulfills their potential. On December 19, 2011, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 66170 to declare October 11 as the International Day of the Girl Child to recognize girls' rights and the unique challenges girls face around the world. And in some foreign news, at least 16 people are confirmed dead after Hurricane Milton passed through Florida. Though the total number of deaths could rise as rescue workers make their way through floodwaters and debris. More than 2 million homes and businesses are without power and thousands of people have been rescued from flooded areas. Officials are warning more flooding is likely in the coming days. Florida residents are being warned not to visit areas hit by Hurricane Milton after it brought tornadoes, flood and storm surges to the state. And over to sports news, the Supergirls of Nigeria will hope to continue with their fine start to the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers when they host Libya in the third round of the qualification series at the Godzilla Pavia Stadium in Uyo later today. While the Supergirls aim to extend their unbeaten start to the series, the Mediterranean Knights will be aiming for their first win. 
The Super Eagles started the qualifiers with a commanding 3-0 victory over Benin Republic before playing a goal at straw away at Rwanda a couple of days later in Kigali. Austin Aguavon's side is currently top of Group D with four points and a doublehead of victory over Libya. We'll see the team sealing a spot at the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. That was our news at 10, but just before we go, your vehicle is not a strong room. Please keep your valuables off the view of Miss Grants. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961, you can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that under the Somolu administration, 51,514 graduates apply for the graduate internship program designed to expose interns to hands-on work experience? Well, you can get more details on the Lake State Government website and to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Governor Baba Jirisol has expressed confidence with the level of construction work at the site of the new Massey Children's Hospital on Lagos Island. The Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, has called on the state government to work out the consequential adjustment to the new national minimum wage without further delay to enable workers in the states to enjoy their monies. We also told you that at least 16 people are confirmed dead after Hurricane Milton passed through Florida, though the total number of deaths could rise as rescue workers make their way through flooded waters and debris. In sports, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will hope to continue with their fine stat to the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers when they host Libya in the third round of the qualification series at the Godzilla Barrio Stadium in Uyo later today. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. The ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by uh, Biola Fadbalago. Thank you for listening. My name is Mike James. Good morning. Thank you.